the issue of independence was was critical to the decision to come back because we had seen what happened to the NPA, as you said, captured prior to the current leadership. And so, you know, having, having um, you know, uh, institutional independence, having your, you know, um, constitutional um, independence, so to speak, it's not enough, we realized, because mm. we saw what happened. And so the, the de jure part of it mm. and the de facto part of it is really important. So when I was first appointed, I've said this before, I, I met with the president and I said to him, Mr. President, sitting across from me, can you give me your word that you will never interfere in the work of the NPA, obviously inappropriately? Mm. And um, he unhesitatingly gave me his word. Um, because I said to him, we know, you know, what's happened in the past, even though we have all of these constitutional guarantees. And um, so so that, that was the first part, really important aspect. And, and I can say, um, you know, without fear of any contradiction, that up until today, um, I've, there's been no interference at all in the work from any of the executive members, president, minister, etc. So from that perspective, the NPA has been allowed to operate independently. But there's another aspect to the independence of, of the prosecuting authority, and that is the functional independence and the able to actually deliver effectively on your mandate. And that capture, that covers um, the other aspect, and that is the aspect where the national director, although, and I talk about the national director because in, in a conversation like this, it's not about Shamila Batoy, it's not about yes. the current minister, it's about an institution that we all want to, as Cheryl said in her introduction, future-proof, because we're going to be leaving soon, and we want to make sure. Well, I should I say soon, and the media gets it all wrong. It's 18 months, <laughs> um, so I've got to be clear about that. Um, we will leave, and there'll be new leadership, and we want to make sure that what we leave behind is a, 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 an NPA that is future-proof. And so one of the other aspects of independence is the, the ability of a national director to be able to run his or her institution in the way that they want. Can you imagine the CEO of an organization not being able to determine your budget, to determine how you spend it, to determine your certain strategies, to determine your structure? How can you, how can you function in that kind of situation? And that is effectively the national director's role is to function in that environment because the DG of justice is the accounting officer of the national director. And if you look at UN guidelines on the role of prosecutors, etc., they all speak about the fact that financial and operational independence is critical. And so I can give a lot of examples in terms of how this relationship has really undermined the, 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 the leadership of the NPA and has really um, made it very difficult to make sure that we can effectively implement many of our strategies that we've put on place. So this is a, a huge challenge for, for any national director. And I think, so, So, you know, how, how do we actually deal with that aspect? But I, I do agree that there needs to be, you know, we can further strengthen the NPAs, yes. you know, the, the independence as far as the, the legal frameworks, et cetera, is concerned. But I think this aspect, you know, requires really urgent attention.